for you. Hopefully this is a little bit better. Um, I think the light is sort of like blurring me a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm back and I want to read about early changes in the Constitution and in government. The American government, Thomas M. Cooley, said that the American government, government is often spoken as if, no, the American government is often spoken as a government based on faith in majorities, but the government is never handed over to the absolute complete control of the majority. So that goes in line with Madison and Federalist paper number 10, where he argues against tyranny of the majority. No constitution or government can remain without change. Time is bring need new needs the wants to the of the people the fathers of constitution intended that it should be used for many years but they knew that changes would be necessary so the way this is the way um in article five of the constitution how the constitution can be changed the Constitution sets out two ways in which may be suggested. It also sets out two ways in which suggested changes can be approved by the people. These are listed in Article 5 of the Constitution. A change or amendment must be suggested. It must be written out in good form. It must be prepared for a vote either in the House of Congress may suggest an amendment, but two thirds of the members in the House must approve it. Hmm. The Constitution was prepared by a convention and the people may prefer that a suggested amendment be prepared in a convention. The Constitution says there's Therefore, the amendments may be prepared in that way. If the legislature of two-thirds of the state requested, two-thirds of the state requested, of the states, <clears throat> the Congress must call a national convention to prepare a suggested of the amendment. So this convention of state is wrong. It's a a national convention, a, a constitutional convention, that you must open, the second way you must open a constitutional convention, and two-thirds of the states must um, prepare a suggested amendment, and two-thirds of a state must be prepared to join in a national convention. So the first way is the House of Congress prepares an amendment to be put into the Constitution, and two-thirds of the Congress people must approve it. And the second way is a national convention, a con-con. After a suggested amendment has been passed by the Congress, it must be ratified, accepted by the states, all of the states. The Congress may send a to the state legislatures, but the Congress may ask the states to hold special conventions to vote on the suggested amendment. <clears throat> when, whenever three-fourths three -fourth of the state legislatures or state conventions vote yes, the amendment becomes a part of the Constitution. Amendment 16 may be invalid because it is argued that we did not get three-fourths of the approval. And that's, it. that's why I'd like to challenge it in court. I don't want to open up a convention. Um, I'm sorry. I don't, I think we have too many communists 
and I, I really would not want to open up a national convention. Um, I'm I, I'm in line with uh, Scalia, and Scalia would not open up a convention either if he was alive. Twenty fourth, the twenty four amendments have been added to the Constitution of the United States. They were prepared and agreed by a two third vote in the House of the Congress. So twenty four amendments were approved and agreed by the House of Congress. <clears throat> All but twenty, but the twenty first amendment were sent by Congress, and I. And I also disagree with this language. Amendment 16, I don't, I think, has a conflict. All but 20 for the, the 21st Amendment were sent to Congress to the state legislature. They were ratified in that way. But the Congress asked the states to call a special convention to vote on the 21st Amendment. It was ratified by the vote of yes in special state conventions. The Bill of Rights, the people who settled early in America loved their liberty. They were free to own property. That was the biggest thing in, uh, uh, in freedom. They could marry and set up homes. <clears throat> they could worship God as they pleased. The people never allowed the government of the colonies or the states to destroy their rights. As today, we do not allow the government to destroy our rights and they are trying to destroy our rights. Amendment two, it, if we allow our state con Congress to regulate our guns, they are destroying our rights to, bear, to own and bear arms. You cannot infringe upon the people's right to own and bear arms. Period. It is in here. It is an infringement. You cannot abridge anyone's right to speak. You cannot abridge anyone's, any journalist, independent journalist's right to journal. It is, it is unconstitutional. And I do not give anybody my right away. My liberty is very important to me as it was back then. I do not allow the government to destroy my rights or to give me any rights that are not in the Constitution. Abortion is unconstitutional. It is not a right in the Constitution to kill any person, whether Developing the wound or outside the wound. For every right, there was a duty. For every right, there is a duty in the Constitution. Only by carrying out their duties could they enjoy these rights. As long as you are lawful, you can enjoy your rights as long as you are American an American citizen you have the full rights in the Constitution understand that if you are not American and you are illegal in America you do not have the full rights if you're illegal you're unlawful The Constitution did not include a statement of the right of the people. Each state constitution contained a Bill of Rights. The father of the Constitution thought that that was enough. Also, the federal government was to have only the authority given to it by clear words of the Constitution. The Constitution gives the government the authority. This is where our politicians get their authority. They must adhere to the Constitution. The important thing, therefore, was to say that the federal government could not, could do not to say what it could not do. Wait, what did it say? The important thing, therefore, was to say that the federal government could do 
not to say what it could not do. So the Constitution is what give the government authority to do what it could do. We remember that some of the state conventions did not want to ratify the Constitution. They said that they did not require the federal government to respect the rights of the people. They wanted the Constitution to say that the new government must respect their rights. And like then, we want the government to respect our rights. Some of the state conventions would not ratify the Constitution until the states agreed that the Bill of Rights would be added later. The first Congress under the Constitution prepared a list suggested amendments containing the rights of the people. These are our rights. We have a right to free speech. Zuckerberg, Facebook, Nextdoor, Twitter, LinkedIn cannot abridge an American citizen's right to speak at all. They cannot tell us what's hate speech. They cannot tell us anything. They cannot abridge it and they cannot punish us for speaking, period. There is no punishment without no crime. There cannot be punishment without a crime. Only crimes, only unlawful activity. And you have to actually give due process to each American. You cannot just disable somebody's account like Facebook did to me without telling me what did I violate? What exactly did I violate? I violated nothing, nothing at all. And I'm still thinking of, and I'm wondering if I could still sue Facebook for abridging my speech, for abridging my right on their platform to create a community as I see fit. <clears throat> the first Congress under the Constitution prepared a list of suggested amendments containing the rights of the people. All the state legislatures ratified 10 amendments by the end of 1791. These became the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. They are called the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights are our rights our individual rights no corp the corporations are artificial and have no rights and must be controlled planned parenthood is an evil corporation committing massive acts of genocide on the unborn it is a violation in the constitution to deprive any person's right and the unborn are people in there growing Abortion is unconstitutional. It deprives life. And I already explained to my, my representative what she must do to correct her abortion bill. There is a win-win resolution, but you must understand it is unconstitutional. I am so sorry. They say that the federal government cannot do certain things. Federal government cannot abridge our speech. The federal government cannot infringe on our right to bear and keep arms, period. They also say that there are certain rights that belong to the people. There are, they are not limited to just citizens. Let us study some of the rights which are protected. The First Amendment says that the federal government shall not do certain things. It says that the Congress shall not make no law, the Con Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press 
or of the right of the people to peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. We see first of all that our government is to be kept separate from the church. Okay, but the church is not to be kept separate from the government. Got it? The government cannot. The church can. That's the difference. If the government is doing something wrong, the church can say, you're doing this wrong and you need to correct. Got it? In some countries, the government had supported one church and had made trouble for those who refused to support it. Many people came to America and still do in order to be free to choose their own church. The First Amendment protects our right to join the church we please. We do not need to belong to a certain church, however, in order to own property, to marry, to vote, or to be public officers. But we must adhere to the laws of God, period. God governs us, and the law, the laws must adhere closely to God's law. Legislation must make people good. And in order to make people good, you need to respect the laws of God. So you do not have to belong to a church. However, you do must agree to make law according to God's law so that we can all be free. The First Amendment does not give a person the right to refuse to obey proper laws. Proper laws. Because his church does not believe in the laws. Proper laws. However, as Christians, I obey God. And if the laws go against God, I will not obey. The government may force a person to support it, even though the church does not agree. That is, that is not right. The government, if the law is not proper, the government cannot force you to support it. Like abortion. Abortion is not a right. It must adhere to the Constitution in order for it to be proper. No government, the 14th Amendment, includes the states into the Constitution. And it says, you cannot deprive any person's life, liberty, or property without due process or equal protection. So the states must adhere to the Constitution. The government may order a person to join the army and fight for the country. Mm, not really. Not really. The government may force us to respect the flag of our nation. Not really. But yes, we should respect our flag. <laughs> if you're an American. The chief purpose of this part of, of the First Amendment is to prevent the federal government from setting up a church and making all people support it. And right now, they are setting up the church of the devil. And they're asking us to support it. They're asking, they're creating an evil and they're creating a wrong. They're creating bad citizens by making us support the schools. The schools are breeding evil into our society. The chief purpose of this part, um, if the people want to keep the right to choose their own church, then the government which protects the right must continue to exist. 
If there is no government, the right will be uh, of no value. For, the re for this reason, the people must obey all the laws that are passed to keep enemies from destroying the government. So we must obey our laws. But we need to obey proper laws. If they are not proper, we do not have to obey. All the laws that are coming out of our state government right now are improper. Most of them, I could say, are improper. Abortion, rent control, they're all improper laws. Gun, con gun control, it's an improper law. The government cannot infringe whatsoever on a law-abiding citizen's right to own and bear a gun, to keep and bear arms. They can only restrict criminals from owning guns. But it is important that you obey proper laws. Because if you don't obey, then you're destroying our government. The duty is just as important as the right. So proper laws. What is a good law? What is a proper law? A proper law adheres to the Constitution. The First Amendment also says that the federal government cannot keep us from saying, writing, or printing anything we wish. The federal government has been abridging our right to free speech through Twitter, through Facebook, through LinkedIn, through YouTube, and violating our rights. We are free to enjoy these rights only so long as we do not hurt someone. Hurt. We cannot commit a crime. We cannot murder. We cannot do any of... We cannot do battery or assault and battery on any person. If we hurt people by saying or writing things that are not true, they may go to court against us. That's how you get somebody. They, for defamation, they hurt me when I ran for office. They lied and they tried to destroy me. They violated my right and they hurt me. They spread lies that I was a racist when I'm not. I have every right to take Hannah Metzer to court. I'm not. She was wrong and she wrote a lie. I did not call anyone a chimp. I asked my opponent a question. Now the question might have not been clear, but that's my fault. But the question adhered to, you know, it must be my dyslexia. Almost all Americans have dyslexia today because our, our schools are not teaching us to read well, period. They hurt me. This means that, the, that newspapers and magazines are free to print the different opinions of people, even if these opinions are not wise or correct. We believe that it is better to let people read the different opinions than to allow other officers to say what may be printed. That means you cannot say what's hate speech. In a, in a republic, it is important that the people have full information on all questions. The officers must know that the wishes of the people, if they are to pass laws that the people need and want. What the press prints is one way the officers learn what the people want. But freedom of the press must be limited. Not individual freedom, but the press. 
For example, the government may publish those who urge others not to obey the law. The government may punish those who urge others not to obey the law. Unless the law is improper, the government may not punish. And actually, that is incorrect. And this book was from 1961. This says that you cannot abridge speech, period. And if you read our founding fathers, they, they, they would say no. The government cannot punish for speech unless it's her, um, you could take somebody for defamation. Also, the government can order the newspaper not to print national defense secrets. I, I agree that I don't agree with that either. Um, because it was 1960 and they kind of changed in the 20th century. I've read all the Federalist and the Anti-Federalist papers and that's not what our, our, what the Founding Fathers intended. So that's incorrect. The First Amendment, and I as a lawyer, if I were a lawyer, I would rewrite that. <laughs> the First Amendment also gives a right to peacefully assemble. This means that the government can not keep us from gathering in a quiet manner in groups for any proper purpose. The colonists often met to decide questions of public interest. The king's officers could not stop them so long as they do not, did not fight among themselves. The right belonged to the colonists because they were English. We also want the right to meet together in groups. We want to give one another our opinions on different matters. In some countries, when groups want to gather and talk, the officers refuse to permit it. But in the United States, our officers cannot prevent any group from meeting for a proper purpose. Communists are not proper groups. <laughs> we may have to get permit from the government in order to meet together, but we do not fear the officers. If our meeting is for a proper purpose, the officers cannot refuse the permit. In a republic where the people rule, this is an important right. The First Amendment says it cannot be taken away from the gov for, by the government. When the colonists asked King George III to change the tax laws, they used a right that had belonged to Englishmen for hundreds of years. It is called the right of petition. The colonists wanted to keep the right and they listed it in the First Amendment. Any person or group of persons may petition the government to change the laws. The government cannot take away the right. Of course, our requests are not always answered in our favor. Some requests are wise while others are not, but the right is ours. No officer can take it away. After the French and Indian War, the right to be safe in our lives and our homes. After the Indian War, and the French Indian War, which were Catholic, England had soldiers live in the homes of the colonists. She did not ask whether the owners wanted them. The officers sometimes searched the people's homes. They often took property without telling them. Telling why. The lives and homes of the people were not safe. The people wanted to make sure that the government would not do these things. The Second, Third, and Fourth Amendment guard the people against such strong actions. The Second Amendment says that the federal government shall not take away the right of the people to bear arms. This gives the state the right 
to have a group of men trained in the use of firearms for use in times of need. This group is called a militia. The Third Amendment says that, the, that in time of peace, no soldier shall be placed in private homes unless the people who own them agree to it. The Fourth Amendment guards the right of the people to be safe from unreasonable searches. Private property cannot be taken except under a written order of an officer which tells where to look and what to look for. These amendments are intended to make the people safe in their homes. There you have it. The government shall not take away the right of the people to bear arms and to keep them. This gives our state of Colorado the right to have a group of men ready and trained to go out. and use those firearms in time of need. The right to be treated fairly in courts. In some countries, men have been sent to prison without being given a chance to prove that they did not break the law. Men have been tried and hanged for things they did not do. Others have been tried before judges who were not fair. The New York judge is not fair. And Trump does not have a fair, would, would not have a fair trial in New York. Still others have been put in jail without being told why. The people want to make sure that the new federal government would not allow these things to be done. The 5th, 6th, and 8th Amendment give every person the right to a fair trial when he is charged with having broken a law of the federal government. A person cannot be tried unless a special body of men known as a grand jury and called together by the court has heard the charges and decided that he should be tried. He can demand a quick and public trial before a judge and jury in the state and district where the crime took place. Any person accused of a crime can demand that he be told plainly what the crime was. New York didn't tell him plainly what the crime was. He sealed it. He must be allowed to hear and to question those who accuse him of a crime. He has the right to make any person come to court and tell what he knows about the wrong. He can ask to have a lawyer. He cannot be forced to say that he has broken the law. In Colorado, there are people being forced to say that they broke a law so that it, there can be a leniency on them. The officers cannot take a person's life and liberty unless the rules set out by the law are followed with care. And, the, and his private property cannot be taken for public use unless the fair market value is paid for it. <clears throat> These rights are most important. The judges guard them with care. He should anyways, before any person is sent to prison or put to death by the government. The judges tries the judge tries to make sure that these rights have been protected. And just because you have a felony doesn't mean that you cannot run for office, actually. The Supreme Court of, so of the United States has often ordered a new trial because the judge did not protect some of the, these rights. The Ninth and the Tenth Amendment say that these are other these that there are other rights that belong to the people. The rights listed 
in the Constitution and in the amendments are not the only rights of the people, like the parental rights. The parental right, even though it's not expressly in the Constitution, is a right of parents. The Ninth Amendment, so it says the rights listed in the Constitution are not the only rights of the people. The Ninth Amendment says that other rights are not taken, are not taken away because they are not mentioned. For example, a person has a right to marry, to have children, to have a home, to send them to public or private schools. These rights are not listed in the body of the Constitution or the Bill of Rights, but they are rights and must not be taken away. And right now, we are being denied as parents our right to raise and train our children. Yet, they are rights that the people must have if they are to be free. The Tenth Amendment keeps certain authority and rights for the people. It says that, the, that any authority not delegated by the Constitution to the federal government nor clearly taken from the states belongs to the states or the people. The federal government cannot object when people use the authority that belongs to them. When the government uses authority that belongs to the people, the people can compel the government to obey the Constitution. And that is what we as the people must do. We must compel the government to obey the Constitution. Thank you very much. Please um, ask me any questions down below. If you have any questions, uh, we could discuss them. And um, join my email list. Subscribe. And if you can spare it, please donate. Thank you very much and have a great day. Happy Easter.